So today we've come to a place where groundwater has depleted tremendously, river water is going away, every water source is just depleting. But in the last hundred years, there is no big change in the amount of rain that is being… Uh, that is happening in the subcontinent. So the rain that is coming is the same, it is just our ability to hold it in the land is gone because the green cover is gone. Walk in hot sun for some time, whole day you walk, just come under a tree and sit. It's magic. Life changes just like that. <laughs> what your vision for… for the conservation of water? and some of the things that you're doing, proactively doing, within the causes. Um, and that relationship as well with, with in particular, your heartland of, of Tamil Nadu and, and also uh, Karnataka. Say I grew up in Karnataka, around Kaveri River, about four and a half years, every day I swam in Kaveri River. When I was between… somewhere between fourteen… fourteen to eighteen, nineteen, at that time, almost every day I swam in Kaveri River. Once I floated down Kaveri for thirteen days on four truck tubes and a few bamboos, <laughs> I lived off the river. In my experience, the river was not some kind of a resource or water source or something. Mm. In my experience, she was a life much larger than me. People like you and me come and go, but this river has flown for a million years. But today we have brought her down to her knees in such a way that the river's survival is, in a is a big question mark. This is not just for one river, this has happened across the country. Mm. Uh, just to give some kind of a picture for people here, they may not be conscious of this. See, we must understand this, in India, this is a tropical country. That means the river is not the source of water, it is only a destination for water. River, pond, lake, well, these are not sources of water, these are destinations for water. There is only one source called monsoon. Monsoon rain is the only source it gathers in the land in various forms. If it is flowing, we call it a river, if it is stagnant, we call it a lake, if it goes inside, we call it a well. But essentially, it is all rainwater. Only four percent of Indian river water is glacial water in the north. In that four percent, nearly three percent of it flows out of the country very quickly in the form of sutlej and indus. Very little comes to Ganga. For example, Ganga. Ganga is twenty-five percent of India's geography, thirty-three percent of India's agriculture, but has depleted over thirty-seven percent because we have removed ninety-two percent of green cover in the Ganga Basin in the last sixty-five years. Ninety-two percent. What is the plan? Narmada has depleted over sixty percent. Godavari has depleted over forty percent, Krishna has depleted over seventy percent. Almost seven months of the year, it's almost dry throughout. Kaveri has depleted, according to studies, forty to forty-four percent. But in my personal experience, see, they are studying this like this. The entire year's water flow, so many million liters or trillion liters, and uh, compared to how it was fifty years ago, now it's gone down forty percent. But leave the monsoon time, at that time there is water. Let's say you take September, October. In the month of October, if you go and see Kaveri, how it is today, is only twenty-five to thirty percent of what it was when I was ten years old. This has happened because we have removed eighty-seven percent of the green cover. Simply, rampantly, one thing is agriculture. I remember this very well, forty years ago when I was in… living on a farm. At that time, it was very common for every farmer to have at least 
a few trees on his land. This was his insurance. In Karnataka especially, this culture was very strong, where they will name the tree after their daughter or their son. They say, this is for the girl, this is for the boy, this is like this. So when the girl's marriage comes, they will chop one tree. Wedding is taken care of, boy wants to go to the university, one tree, that is taken care of. So always trees were there in the farmland. But forty years ago when really this chemical fertilizers came in a big way, till then we were very organic. <laughs> when chemical fertilizers came, I know this very well because I've heard people coming and campaigning. These companies came and campaigned in the villages of India saying that if you have trees in the land, their root systems are aggressive, they will eat up all the fertilizer. You have to take away the trees. So we took away millions and millions of trees across farmlands because they thought chemical fertilizer will be wasted on the trees. So today we've come to a place where groundwater has depleted tremendously, river water is going away, every water source is just depleting. But in the last hundred years, there is no big change in the amount of rain that is being… Uh, that is happening mm. in the subcontinent. Mm. So the rain that is coming is the same, it is just our ability to hold it in the land is gone because the green cover is gone. Without the necessary organic content, you cannot hold the green… water in the soil. When rain comes, how slowly it moves in towards the river will determine how long the river will flow in the year, how many months it will flow. If it moves rapidly, within three months it will be over, it goes slowly, it will flow for twelve months. This is all the thing is. There's a very wonderful… I can do another googly, Tamil googly for you <laughs> In Tamil language there is an ancient saying which says, Nadanda vandada kaveri valam, odi vanda vellam. This means only if Kaveri comes walking, she brings wealth and prosperity. If she comes running, she'll bring disaster. Mm. So how do you make a river walk? If a river has to walk, there has to be substantial vegetation that the water that comes down in the form of rain is held in the land and slowly it moves towards the river. Today, this whole understanding of river systems is been lost completely. Because if you say rivers, so many… I see so many people of Indian origin, you ask them what are the rivers, they will name seven, eight, ten, twelve rivers, major rivers. They will say Ganga, Narmada, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri. But you need to understand, a river doesn't exist by itself. For example, Kaveri has over one hundred and twenty tributaries. And most of these tributaries don't even flow for three to four months in a year. They were all perennial streams. But today, most of them are not flowing more than three to four months. Kaveri is not touching the ocean for over six months. She is receding by the year. This is happening mainly because there is no green cover. So, this project, what we have taken up called Kaveri Calling, is an offshoot of Rally for Rivers. Rally for Rivers was done with the intent of changing the policy framework. We are hundred percent successful in this because the policy that we offered to the central government was accepted in total. They put it through the scientific tests and then the economic tests and they found it as an ideal policy and this was recommended for all the twenty-nine states as official policy. And <coughs> About four states are proactively pursuing this policy. Another three to four states we have uh, memorandum of understanding and we are working with them. But many other states are just not doing anything about it though because a river is a concurrent subject between federal government and the state government, center can only advise, it's the state which needs to act. So where they have not acted, there you see serious water issues. So now Kaveri calling is a different level of project. We have taken another project in Maharashtra, uh, you wouldn't know there's a place called Yavatmal, there's a Vagari river, are there Marathi people? So this is known in the country unfortunately as the suicide capital of the country, of India. Because maximum number of farmer suicides happened. 
Now in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, this is bec becoming a, you know, a, like a regular yearly uh, score is happening. Today in Tamil Nadu, eighty-three percent of the farmers are considered to be under distressed loans. Seventy-seven percent of Karnataka farmers are under distress debt. What a distress debt is, is that they have no means to pay the money which they have taken. It doesn't matter how much farming they do, they have no means to pay. Mm. This means either they have to sell the land or run away somewhere or hang from a tree. These are the options we are giving them. We are driving a whole mass of people in this direction. This has happened for variety of reasons, but the fundamental reason is lack of rich soil. What was a very fertile soil, you know? We have farmed the same land for over twelve thousand years. But today in one generation, we are turning it into a desert-like space, mainly because the only way you can enrich the land is by the leaves of the trees and by the animal waste. Trees are gone long time ago, animals are all traveling to other countries. Now, there is no leaves, there is no animal waste, there is no way to recoup this soil. Out of 160 million hectares of arable land in India, 104 million hectares have been identified as distressed soil because there is no leaf, there is no animal waste. If we don't put back trees back in the soil, if you don't bring animals back into the farm, uh, we will… our ability to grow food will be completely gone. This is one of the greatest achievements in India. Without any modern science or technological advancements, just with sheer traditional knowledge, our illiterate farmer has grown food for over a billion people for the last seventy years. But today we are driving him to the wall, <clears throat> to such a place. So the plan for Kaveri calling is just this, we want to convert one-third of this eighty-three thousand square kilometers into agroforestry. We've already converted about seventy thousand Tamil farmers into agroforestry. Their incomes in five to seven years have gone up anywhere between three to eight times. That is, I'm talking about three hundred to eight hundred percent increase in income, simply growing trees in one third of their land. So we want to bring this to the entire region. The challenge is to bring about… See, we can go like this, seventy thousand have happened every year, thousand, two thousand people are going into it. If you go at this rate, we will take two to three generations. Now with Kaveri calling, I'm trying to crush time into twelve years, twelve-year project this is. In twelve years, we want to see that 2.42 billion trees are planted by the farmers in the region. If we do this, the water that is sequestered by this, this is proper scientific studies are there, will be something like nine to twelve trillion liters. To give you some uh, perspective, the entire water flow in Kaveri per year is twenty-one point two trillion. So if twelve trillion liters extra go into the land, river will flow once again full on. All the groundwater will be replenished, people will live well. See, if you don't know what I'm talking about, many of you who live in cities may not understand what I'm saying. Just go out, you have out back, walk in hot sun for some time, whole day you walk, just come under a tree and sit. It's magic. Life changes just like that. <laughs> if you have ever really walked long distances, you will understand what I'm talking. You just go under a tree after hot sun and sit there, life changes. This life-changing, you know, wealth that we always had, the entire region was tropical forest. Unfortunately, uh, in short-sightedness we have removed, but we can put it back, it's possible to do it. We need everybody's support to do this in Tamil Nadu, we need Matt.